What's going on, guys? Welcome back to Tully Television. And today, we are going to start uh, our review on Hawkeye, the Disney Plus show. Uh, we're going to be starting, obviously, with episode one. And um, before we get into that, I want to thank everyone for stopping by liking, sharing, commenting, hitting all on that bell notification. So you never miss an episode of Tully Television. But without further ado, let's get into Hawkeye, Episode 1, Never Meet Your Heroes. Uh, written by Jonathan Igla, stars Jeremy Renner as Hawkeye, Haley Steinfeld as Kate Bishop, Vera Farmica as Eleanor Bishop, Ra Free as Cassie. Tony Dalton as Jack, uh, Ducosant, uh, du, Ducosant, aka the Swordsman, <laughs> uh, Linda Cardellini as Laura Barton, Clint's wife, Nicole Lambert as um, a friend of Kate by the name of Greer. Uh, I'm going to explain why I added her wrong because uh, she's not a Last in character throughout the series. Uh, Simon Cowell Cal as Armand III. Ava Russo as Lily Barton. Ben Shakamoto as Cooper Barton. And Cad Woodward as Nate Barton. Um, we see... Uh, this is, uh, this Hawkeye series was the third series that Disney Plus released in, uh, 2021. The first two was WandaVision and Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I'll leave, uh, the playlist links down below for those shows. But, um, we open up with Kate Bishop as a child, young girl, uh, listening over here and her parents have a discussion about, you know, adult problems, finances and what have you. And then, as luck would have it, that was the same day that the Battle of New York was happening, uh, when the Shatari and Loki invaded uh, Earth through the wormhole. Um, that was happening at the same time as Kate's parents uh, having this discussion. Uh, the house uh, was damaged and Kate was looking for her parents. And the mother was uh, the only one that survived with Kate. Uh, the father died, but we never really seen the father die. Uh, and if you're a comic book fan or... Uh, you know, a fan of these type of things, you know, if you never see a body, you can never be too sure. <laughs> um, but as uh, Kate was able to see what was going on out in the city with all this stuff, she sees Hawkeye from a distance jumping off a building and uh, turning around and shooting some arrows. Uh, at enemies and then being able to crash through the side of a building uh, through the windows. And uh, from that point on, she was enthralled with Hawkeye and uh, the superhero life, but more so Hawkeye. Because it showed that um, if you really train your body, you can uh, still be a superhero, uh, unlike you know, being born a god like Thor or getting a super soldier serum like Captain America or using technology in some sort of way. Um, basically, Clint was, a, I'm still going to call him like an Olympian level human. Uh, the same with Natasha. If you, you know, these people that are just trained to become super fighters, uh, weapons to be used. They're pretty much Olympics, uh, Olympic level athletes, in my opinion. And so, in her mind, she feels that she could do what Hawkeye did. He had no reason to be out there saving people, but he was. And that impressed her even in a time of grief. Uh, we see, uh, even though it's through the opening credits, 
uh, the opening animation, we see her going through uh, training to become a gymnast, to become an archer, to become these different things, so she can eventually become uh, like Hawkeye. Then we advance all these years later, and we see her uh, in school, in college, uh, getting dared to uh, ring a bell, an old t clock tower bell, with one of her arrows. Uh, after a failed first attempt, uh, she was able to get it. The second attempt, uh, clearly, uh, totally obliterating the clock tower tower in the process. And she wound up getting sent home. And being her uh, mother has money uh, at this point, uh, anything like that that, that that Kate does, she's just able to pay off uh, without too much of a hassle. But um, I'm going to mention this character Greer for a quick second because um, when Kate was on the phone with her, one of her two friends that was across the street waiting for this clock tower debacle to happen. Uh, the name on the caller ID was Greer, and that's a nickname for a character by the name of Tigra. And then uh, she was part of the West Coast Adventures with Clint Barton, and um, just not, you know, also on the main Avengers team. So. I don't know that if that's just, uh, I know that's an Easter egg, but I don't know if that's going to come about anytime uh, after this series or at all. Uh, but basically, she gets sent home back to her mother, and her mother kind of tries to instill a little um, knowledge on her, like, you know, you can't keep doing these things because eventually... Uh, there's going to be no way of out, no way out of what you are got yourself into. But uh, as she came back home, she uh, realized that her mother was seeing someone. Because all the swords around, the mother never really had these swords around. And it wound up being Jack uh, the Swordsman. And uh, Kate immediately becomes suspicious because she's thinking that maybe he's after the mother's money. Uh, maybe he's just being uh, a user and an abuser. So she's very um, confrontational with him on a passive-aggressive level. Uh, she talks about how she's... Uh, you know, knows fencing and this and that. And, uh, you know, so they kind of start off as a uh, clashing, uh, or at least on, on Kate's side. Um, at that point, uh, Kate gets invited to a charity ball that the mother and Jack are going to. So they decide to go do that. In the meantime, we see Clint and his three children visiting New York, and they're at uh, the Captain Rogers musical that's been going on. And holy moly, that is such a lame, corny performance. And you can tell he's just sitting there like, what is this that I'm watching? Um, at one point, uh, there's an actor playing uh, Ant-Man, and um, Clint was like, he wasn't even there, <laughs> which in a technical way he was, but it wasn't until they did the time heist. So, but yeah, yeah, again, in this play, Clint seemed to be, the person playing Clint seemed to, um, like they weren't giving Clint a whole lot of respect in the play, uh, his respect on that name. Uh, we also see that he's wearing um, hearing hearing aids, hearing devices, because, as we'll come to find out, because he's just human and doesn't have, like, uh, regenerative powers, uh, these explosions that would happen near his head or uh, around him and stuff like that affected his hearing. And I can only imagine how many... Uh, real life concussions he's gotten in his life, 
uh, to make him not think good no more like Pitman. <laughs> Uh, but they didn't get too much into that aspect, the, the, just the hearing aid part. Um, he needs, uh, at, also at the same time, he sees a young girl dressed up in a Black Widow costume, acknowledging him that she knows that he's Hawkeye. Uh, that starts to mess with him a little bit. He goes to the bathroom. Uh, as he's at the urinal, someone graffiti Danis was right on the urinal he was uh, using and someone comes in and of course has to take the spot right next to him which is like you have all these other urinals my guy and of course the guy was like hey can can I get a selfie and when it looks at him like I, I I'm pissing man like I, I'm pissing. So as he's cleaning himself up, the guy comes again and just and kind of just, I guess, concedes to doing it, even though we don't see him doing it. And then he's outside trying to collect his breath because he seems to be getting like a bit of a panic attack. And um, the kid, his kids come out and the daughter's talking to him saying, you know, we, we understand that, like, for us, she was Aunt Natty, but for you, she was your, your best friend. And, um, you know, we understand how hard this has been for you, uh, especially, you know, because he's probably been as honest as he can with the kids and the what, more probably with the wife than the kids. You know, you know, you're not going to sit there. And tell kids, oh yeah, and then I had to stab an alien through the eye with a knife, and uh, you know, and then the eyes popped out, and I got blood all over my face, and you know, maybe that's not something you want to use as a bedtime story, uh, but use, sorry, uh, but use uh, the story to kind of help alleviate that pain that you're coming through with your wife or. Or, or your partner or something like that. Someone who's been there like that. And he doesn't have Nat to go to anymore. He only has the wife to go to. Um, but basically that's happening. Uh, Kate then uh, comes across. Um, <clears throat> sorry. A little. Clipped. Or clipped. Kate runs into Armin, Armin the third, the old man, and he brings up how the mother and ja uh, Jacques are engaged, which takes Kate by surprise, and the old man's like, well, that's no I wonder why they're keeping that a secret, and then he goes, takes off, and Kate decides to find out where Jack is, and she comes across the mother talking to the old man. And the old man is telling the mother, I know, you may not think that people know how you got your money and this and that, but I do. And uh, you're never going to be anything like us or, you know, try to get to our level. You never will be at our level. Uh, pissing the mother off and she takes off. Uh, Kate asks her what's going on. Eleanor tells her not to worry about it. So there's obviously going to be more to that than meets the eye. Transformers? <laughs> um, I don't know what. Um, finally, Kate makes her way down to the basement because uh, she sees a bunch of people and Jack going downstairs of this building they're in. At some sort of uh, sub-basement area where there's an illegal black market auction uh for instance there's a triceratops skeleton to bid on which would be dope in some sort of way to have if you had the room uh the next item up for bid was the ronin sword and suit that clint was using as his time as ronin but no one seems to know at this point that clint barton was ronin the assassin um, so Jacques, being the swordsman he is, wants the Ronin sword. And, uh, 
the, the elf is probably just a secondary thing for him to have, but he's looking for the sword mostly. So it does kind of put a little doubt on what his true intentions are. Is he looking to be the new Ronin? What's going on here? As the auction's going on, there's an explosion that goes off, and we find out that's the tracksuit mafia trying to steal items from this black market auction, primarily uh, a Rolex that was found at Avengers uh, headquarters after Danis had attacked, and someone wants that Rolex. Um, they're not even looking for the Ronin sword or costume. But in the confusion, uh, Jack, Jack winds up getting the Ronin sword and hiding it and taking off. And uh, Kate winds up coming across the Ronin outfit and putting it on and trying to take on the tracksuit mafia crew on her own. Uh, she's able to put a couple guys at bay, but she is getting tossed around pretty good too, which is a good thing because. You know, I can't expect a 120-pound woman to always take out, like, a 250-pound man who has spent all his life working out and fighting, and now you are 21 uh, with limited hand-to-hand -hand experience are going to come and break everyone's nose and legs. And I, I That's one thing I liked about this series was that Kate definitely was not uh, Mary Sue, when it can come comes to that, uh, she got her ass kicked. She didn't know everything. She fucked up, and I like when that happens because it makes the character more relatable down the road. Um, that's the biggest difference between a character like Ray Palpatine and Kate Bishop. Kate Bishop actually learns from her failures because she has failures to learn from. Um, we never see why Ray knows so much because, you know, she's living on a desert island, a desert planet for all her life, but she knows how to ride uh, spaceships and use lightsabers and use for the force. And no, Kate Bishop got her butt kicked here, uh, pretty pretty good throughout the show, and here in the first episode, she was getting thrown around. Um, finally, the fight led outside, and. We see that she has a heart because there's a stray dog that was about to get hit. And she winds up saving the dog from getting hit in traffic. And during this whole fight, uh, the news winds up starting to report on what's going on. And as we're closing out on the episode, we see Clint uh, coming back to the... Um, uh, Coming back to the, the hotel that him and the kids were at because they were going to do, um, you know, more holiday uh, things they do, like a holiday movie marathon and this and that. And uh, they put on the news and they're like, Dad, like, look what's going on. And we see the news reporter saying that after years of being absent, it appears that the Ronin is back. Uh, in play, meaning like being back around, Clint was like, what? Ronan? Like, I'm Ronan. That's, but that's Ronan, and they're there, and I'm here. What? What? <laughs> Basically, he tells the kids, I'm going to have to go now. Check this out. He takes off. Uh, Kate took off, and she finally gets cornered in an alley by the tracksuit mafia. And here comes Hawk, Hawkeye Clint, taking them out from a distance. And they all go taking off. And then he finally confronts Kate. And he's like, you know, you get over there, get over there. What are you doing with that on? And, da -da -da, and he takes off the mask, and he's like, Sees it's a young girl because, I mean, you figure Clint at this point is uh, late 30s, early 40s, you know what I mean? He's been all over the world 
used as an assassin, used as a weapon uh, from his time of S.H.I.E.L.D., from his time with Avengers, as his time with Ronin. So he's got plenty of real-life experience. And see this young girl under the mask, his initial uh, response was like, oh, come on! Like, Jesus! And that's kind of uh, where the episode ends, uh, pretty much him being pissed off and her regretting meeting her hero. Because <laughs> uh, she's probably hoping that Clint would be like, yeah, all right, cool. No, you're a kid. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> I would feel the same way at this stage. I'm 45, and if I was some sort of superhero that kind of was a bit aggressive in my in my years as a superhero, and then seeing someone up, someone taking that mantle, and but they're like, yeah, it's just fresh off the mother's head. I'm gonna be like, dude, this is not what you want to do. Like, it changes you. <laughs> um, but we're gonna see how the rest of the episodes go. Um, I'm gonna give this episode a good eight point five out of ten. Um, you know, I. Uh, I'm ho I I feel like that this was one of the better shows uh to have come out. It started off with uh some real good action and uh the only reason why I'm not giving it a nine or a ten out of ten is because uh I don't really get to see Clint kick too much ass except for the end, you know, and I wanna I wanna see more Clint. But um it was a good start to the to the series. I think this is a quicker start of action and intrigue than the WandaVision and Loki show had. And I feel like this may be uh one of the best Disney show shows that Marvel's had yet. Um my current uh Ranking is obviously Scarlet, uh, WandaVision first and Loki uh, second, but we'll see where Hawkeye fits into the three here for the year. And uh, yeah, that's my thoughts on Haw Hawkeye episode one. I want to thank everyone for stopping by. Uh, like, comment, share, hit all on that bell notification when you subscribe. I hope that I've earned your subscription today. And uh, I hope that I've been able to add some sort of entertainment to your day. And, uh, yeah, take it easy, everyone. Peace, nookums. <laughs>